Welcome to the We're Scriptures podcast. My name is Dion Cameron and I'm your host. And I'm so happy that you could join with me today. My topic is God can change the heart. God can change the heart. There was once this proud king. He was the king over the most powerful nation of the earth at that time. He had conquered many nations, but he didn't realize that it was his creator, his heavenly father, who had given him the ability and the power and the strength to become the most powerful man on the earth at that time. He thought his accomplishments, his power, his prestige and great wealth were all due to his own wisdom and might. So God warned him in a dream as any father would do. God warned him in a dream that he needed to humble himself before him and acknowledge that he, the Most High God, is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and he gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of people. The king was to repent and be kind to the oppressed if he wanted to continue being prosperous in his kingdom. Twelve months later, after the king had received that dream, he was walking on the roof of his royal palace and gloating over his position and power when God judged him and he lost his mind. He became insane For seven years, he lived with the wild animals of the field and ate grass like an ox. His hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. The king lost his favor with God because he refused to repent and humble himself before his creator, his heavenly father. At the end of the seven years, God restored the king's sanity. God gave him back his throne and his honor and his glory. God changed the king's heart. The king now humbled himself before God and acknowledged God's sovereignty. The king said in Daniel chapter 4 verses 34 through 37, But at the end of the days, that is at the seven periods of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my understanding and reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High God and I praised and honored and glorified him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are regarded as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And no one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? Now at the same time, my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor were returned to me. And my counselors and my nobles began seeking me out. So I was re-established in my kingdom and still more greatness than before was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the King of heaven for all his works are true and faithful and his ways are just and he is able to humiliate and humble those who walk in self-centered, self-righteous pride. God can change the heart. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. He turns it whichever way he chooses, like channels of water. The heart is spoken of in the Bible as the center of moral and spiritual life. The heart is connected 
with our minds, how we think, our will and desires, whether good or evil. Proverbs 23, 7a says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible says sin and depravity comes from the heart. Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 through 10 talks about the heart. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I the Lord, God says, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Jesus described the Pharisees in Matthew 15 verses 7 through 9. Jesus said, You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus went further to teach about the heart in Matthew chapter 15, verses 17 through 20. Jesus said, Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person. The heart is the root of the problem. So this is the place where God does his work in a person. God can change the heart. But some may say, hasn't God given us a free will? Yes, God has given each of us a free will. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 19 through 20, Moses speaking to the Israelites said to them, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, there Jesus also tells us that he stands at the door and he knocks at our hearts. And if we choose to open up our hearts to him, he will come in and fellowship with us. So yes, we have a choice. We as humans have a choice. However, God's will is sovereign or supreme over man's will. God has the final authority and the final say. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 22 through 25 says, He, God, sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, He spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 10 through 13 says, this is God speaking. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, 
and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaim. I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? God has the final say over all the affairs of men. Yes, God can change a person's heart and then their willpower or their resolve will follow. God changed Pharaoh's heart. Instead of softening his heart, God hardened it. Let's look at Exodus chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. It reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. God explained in Exodus chapter 10 verses 1 through 2 why he hardened Pharaoh's heart. It reads, then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his officials, so that I may perform these signs of mine among them, that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them, and that you may know that I am the Lord. If God can harden the heart, he can also soften the heart so that it becomes pliable to his word. God can change the heart. God changed Jonah's heart. God had told Jonah to go to Nineveh and to warn the people that because of their great wickedness, he was going to bring judgment on the city. However, Jonah refused to go and he tried to escape God's presence and his duty as a prophet. So God caused a great storm to come against the ship that Jonah was fleeing on. The sailors re reluctantly threw Jonah overboard and a huge fish swallowed Jonah. Jonah was in the stomach of the fish for three days and three nights. He realized he had no choice if he wanted to be alive, so he humbled himself before God and repented. God then commanded the fish to vomit him out on dry land. Jonah then obeyed God and went to Nineveh and proclaimed the word of the Lord to the people of Nineveh. God can change the heart and then the person's willpower or their resolve will follow. God changed the Apostle Paul's heart. Before God changed his name, the Apostle Paul was a religious Pharisee overseeing the persecution and murder of the Christians. He was present at Stephen's stoning. Acts 8, 1, a says, Saul wholeheartedly approved of Stephen's death. 
However, God met him on his way to Damascus, where he was going to persecute the Christians. He was going to arrest them and put them in jail. However, God changed his heart and removed the spiritual scales from his eyes. And Saul became Paul, a new creation in Christ. God can change the heart. Many of us were going the wrong way, just like the Apostle Paul. We were rebellious sinners, far from God and under his wrath. However, he had mercy on us and gave us grace and changed our hearts and showed us his mercy. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 through 27. There God says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my ordinances and do them. In these end times, as everything that can be shaken is being shaken, God is going to change the hearts of many people and bring them into his kingdom. Jesus' mandate is still the same today. Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 21, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, he has sent me to announce release, pardon, and forgiveness to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, having stopped in the middle of the verse, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down to teach. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were attentively fixed on him. He began speaking to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. God can change the heart. Isaiah chapter 35 verses 5 through 6 says, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy, for waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. God can change the heart. Keep on praying for your loved ones who needs a heart change. Also, pray for the lost. God can change the heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are sovereign over all the affairs of men. And we thank you, God, that you can change the heart. We are living proof that you can change the heart. Heavenly Father, we ask for you, wherever there is fear in our hearts, God, for you to put boldness and courage. Wherever there is worry, for you to put your peace, Father God. Wherever there is unforgiveness and bitterness, for you to remove it, God, and to place your love and your forgiveness in our hearts. And we pray for our loved ones, God, and the lost, We ask for you to change their hearts, God, so that they will come into a relationship with you. Thank you, God, that you can change the heart and then the person's will, power, and their resolve will follow. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If this podcast has blessed you, please consider sowing a seed. You can give via PayPal at www.paypal.me slash where scriptures 
or you can donate on our website. Your donations help us to fulfill the Great Commission. Also, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you listen. Your review helps the show reach more people and spread the gospel. And you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. And we invite you to visit our store, wearscriptures.com. Strengthen your faith in God. We're scriptures.